This is what we're going to be making today, our little James Rizzi style happy house. And we're going to be able to open it up and have a whole life going on inside our happy house building. So you are going to need a pencil, um, some type of background paper. I chose blue because I'm going to do daytime. You can choose any color you want. You can choose a darker color or do a nighttime scene. You're going to need a piece of mixed media paper. You will need some markers, magic markers. You'll need a glue stick. And you're actually going to need a paintbrush and some water. Even though we're not using watercolors, we're going to use our magic markers today and turn them into watercolors. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is create your happy house. This little guy over here. And the way I did it was I folded the paper in half to make kind of like a card. And then we're going to just draw a building shape and it can be any shape you like. I'm going to show you how I did mine. And I didn't do a straight building. I did kind of a little curve so he looks like he's moving and happy and dancing. I'm going to draw mine in Sharpie so you could see it, but you should draw yours in pencil. Now I want my happy house to be able to open up, so I'm going to draw part of it. I'm going to draw it more towards the side of the fold, and I'm only going to be cutting part of the fold because I want it to hold together. And I'm just going to straight from the bottom, give a little curve, and just a little curve down there, and that's the shape of my happy house. I forgot to tell you, we also will need scissors, because we are going to cut out our happy house. Just like that. Looks like a dancing shape already, and then it's going to open up. I'm going to hold on to my scraps to make anything that I'm going to put in the background later. So I'm just going to put my scraps aside and my scissor aside, and we can get to drawing our happy house face. Now, I'm going to use pencil. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to use marker to draw it so you can see it, but I would suggest that you draw in pencil in case there's something that you want to change at any point. And I'll draw it upside down for you. Some of James Rizzi's houses in his, in his um, artwork have eyes. And I kind of like that. I think it gives him a lot of personality. And the eyes could also be windows into the apartment buildings. So I'm going to start with some eyes. And you can start with eyes also, or you can just make a whole building full of windows. And I'm going to give him a square nose. Then I'm going to turn into a window like that. And then for the mouth, I'm going to do a line of windows, but I'm going to do them in the shape of a smile. Like that. And then I'm going to add some more windows down here. And maybe I'll add some larger windows. And one thing I, you'll notice if you look at James Rizzi's artwork, he uses all sorts of symbols in his artwork, like stars and hearts and moons. So you can do that for your windows also. For the final row, I'm just going to make some more square windows. like that. I think we have some room up here for maybe some eyebrows too. Why not? 
and in each of his windows, some have window panes here, but I'm gonna do some curtains and shades and I'll show you how to do that. So the curtains, kind of look like the letter R. So one is going forward and one is going um, backwards. That's how I made the curtains. And then I'm going to make a shade like this one right here. And I'm going to do a mixture down here. And I'm also going to do something silly. I'm going to take up one window in the middle and I'm just putting in a picture of a cat instead of a shade or anything like that or a curtain. And I'm going to just do some different types of shades. Okay. So that's what I have so far. Now I'm going to go back and in some of the windows I'm going to draw a couple of things like I did here. If you could see I drew a bird and um, a person kind of popping up from the bottom. Here on this side there's two people talking and here we just have a, it looks like a giant, a giant eyeball. So maybe it's a giant person and let's see up here. This guy here um, actually has a tiny little cat popping up. So take some time to draw some little things popping up in your windows. And definitely do that with pencil. I'm going to do it with marker so you can see it. In this bottom window here, I drew just two people looking at each other. And let's see. Maybe I'll draw some birds in one window. It's kind of hard to draw with a Sharpie because it's so thick, but I want you to be able to see it. And I'm just going to add some extra little... designs. Uh, around my small windows, I think I'm going to outline them. I just gave a little extra to my heart window there. So around some of my windows, I'm giving some scallop type of lines and this will all look really cute once I color it in like that. So here's just some different ideas that you can do and certainly take your time. I'm trying to do this quickly for you but take your time to just get your initial design. And I'm going to go now, I'm going to put my Sharpie away because I think I'm ready to start coloring it in. Now I'm not going to color this in fully. What I did here was I chose one color for my house. I chose the red and I just outlined the house and then I co uh, colored it in with water. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm going to use a different color this time. I'm going to use this green and I'm just going to outline You're just going to work on a piece of scrap paper and um, I'm going to, because I'm going to be using watercolor and I don't want it to run through the back, I'm going to put my paper like this just to protect my desk. Not that it's already a mess, but just to keep it dry and to protect the, the second sheet that we're going to be drawing on. 
So I think I want to make this this house more like rainbow colors. So I'm going to actually do another little line. And I'm not going over any of my windows or any of my drawing. I'm just trying to go around it. See how I'm doing that? And I think I might do um, a couple more colors like that. Like maybe a light pink. Why not? Let's have some fun with colors today. And I'm just going to go inside the house and just do some more lines of color. I'm not coloring it in because I want a different effect. I don't want um, the marker to look like I colored it in. I want it to look more like watercolor. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go crazy a little bit with the colors like this. It still looks kind of fun already like that. Let's see if you can see that. And then I'm gonna take some water and a paintbrush. And I'm going to basically just put water on my magic marker and you'll see how it starts to run together like watercolor paint. And I'm just trying to paint the building part. I don't want to paint in my windows, so I'm trying to be really careful. You see how it's really colorful and fun. I wasn't sure how that was going to turn out with all the different colored lines but I think it's really neat. Kind of like a rainbow house, a rainbow happy house. I love rainbows. They always make me happy, so it's perfect on the house. And see, as I, as I keep going this way, it's kind of filling in the design, but I'm not coloring inside the windows because I'm going to go, when this paint dries, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some details. And that's when I want to get my marker effect. But right now I just want like that interesting watercolor effect. So in order for this to work, you must use magic, water-based magic markers. You can't use permanent markers. Magic markers, because they're water-based, they run like this. A permanent marker won't, as you can see, because I drew a permanent marker in the black, and you can see that it didn't run, but everything inside did. And I have like a really pretty rainbow house. I'm very happy with that. Good, I did that. I was a little scared at first, but I experimented, which is really what you should do in art. Because you never know, even sometimes you never know, like if you make a mistake, you don't know where that's going to lead. So I'm going to give this a few minutes to dry, and then I'm going to come back and show you what to do next. So let's take a, a break for five minutes and let it dry, and I'll see you right back here. And I'm back and I actually hit this with the hair dryer to make it dry a little bit faster. Something you might notice when you use watercolor paints or when you use water on paint is that it becomes a little bit warped and bumpy. That's fine. What's going to happen is when you're done with your project, you can just take a book and lie it down on it for a while and it'll flatten out your paper. 
so no worries there. So now that this is pretty much dry, I'm going to go in and hit it with some bold uh, colors. So the watercolor gives us a very soft, transparent look, and then I'm going to hit it with some bold, opaque um, magic markers like that. So it'll give me two different types of, of coloring. Let's see, where do I want to start? Let's start with some blue eyes. Where's my blue? And now I'm going to color I'm going to just color everything on the front with magic marker. I, I drew mine, I started in, I drew my picture in Sharpie so you could see it on film. You probably drew it in pencil. When you're all finished coloring this in, you can outline everything in a black marker and that will help make it pop. That's what I did here. And this one, I drew everything in pencil first, then I colored it in. I did the watercolor technique and then I colored in with the regular marker. And then I went over everything with the black marker just to make it pop. And I like to outline things. I think it makes it, when you're doing this style of pop art, it really just makes it uh, the colors more bold and stand out. So let's get some color in these windows here. And I'm just having fun with my magic markers, choosing all sorts of different bright colors. If you've ever seen James Rizzi's artwork, he uses a lot of bright colors, which I love. I've been following his art for many years. He, at one time, actually built buildings in Germany that look exactly like this. You could look it up on the internet, James Rizzi Buildings in Germany, and they are so super cool, and I think people work in those buildings. I think they're uh, for businesses. I would love to live in a James Rizzi building. I think it would be really neat. Do you think you'd want to live in one of these buildings? And have a heart-shaped window to look out every day over the city? Or have some big, bright, colorful pop-art pop art birds on your building? Or a building with eyes? I think that'd be kind of neat. So I'm getting a lot of um, bends and wrinkles in my paper right now, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to keep going, and I know that later on, if I keep a book over it after I'm completely finished and this is dry, I can put a book over it overnight, and that will definitely help this curling situation. So I'm coloring in every single window. I'm going to show you what I have so far and then add a few more details. I love the watercolor. It looks like tie-dye. So see how nice and bright that is? Lots of fun. So I'm putting some bright yellow inside some of the windows so they look like um, somebody's home, the lights are on. And I think I'm going to make some of the other windows darker so it looks like the lights are not on. You can do that with 
gray or black to make the windows look dark. And I'm also going to add some more people. I'm going to use a thinner pen here. Get some more people in my in my windows. So I finished coloring my the front of my happy house and I'm ready to go on the inside. So the inside of this happy house, we have a whole party going on in here. You can really do whatever you like. I made a couple of different floors and you can see the different stairs. Now that's certainly a happy house. We have people dancing upstairs. We have just a lot of different designs going on to make it a lot of fun. So I'm going to start by making some lines so it looks like different floors. If you've ever been in an apartment house, you may even live in an apartment house, they have different floors. Some have just a few floors, two or three, and some have like 50 floors or more. So I'm just starting with lines and then I'm going to make stairs. like that in the house. And I'm going to make some more stairs down this way, going in the opposite direction. Like that. And let's see, we could add some people, you could add animals. Just have a good time. What do you think, or who do you think, would be living inside a happy house? Take a moment to use your imagination and kind of come up with some ideas of what you might see once you walked into an apartment building that looked like this on the outside. And let's have some fun with it. So I'm going to go right in and just do some crazy drawings. I think people would be dancing in a happy house like this for sure. I'm going to do like hearts and stars and just lots of fun colors in the background. Here I have a couple dancing. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to make some crazy stairs. Because I think the stairs in a happy house would be really colorful and, and fun. And then I'm going to color in all the things in it that I've drawn inside my happy house. And take your time on this and really have a, use your imagination and have some fun with it. I'm working quickly just for the sake of time on the video, but you're welcome to pause the video at any time. You know, usually when I, um, again, when I draw like this, I do use a dark black marker for outlining because I really feel it helps make the whole picture kind of pop out. Makes it look more like pop art. I think this would be a pretty cool house to live in or apartment building to live in. It's very colorful. And I'm going to do some dots in the background. And I'm going to try and fill up this inside of our happy house with lots of patterns and colors. behind the stairs. Popped in a little kitty cat. I don't know if you could see that behind the stairs. I'm just having a lot of fun with this. I'm going to give our friends here that are dancing some crazy purple hair. Sometimes 
we all need some purple hair, right? And maybe instead of, I'm going to make them blue people. Why not? Maybe when you live in a happy house, your skin and your hair turn into the colors of the rainbow. And just a few more details I'm going to add. And then I'm going to go over it with a black marker because my drawing is losing some of its um, some of its brightness because the colors are kind of melding together. So I just want to finish coloring it in. And I feel like when you use the black outline, it also neatens it up. So if you look at the cat and the people, they kind of lost their outlines. So I'm going to go back with my Sharpie. And see if I can make them pop out again. And you'll see the comparison on top. I did one of the people. I outlined him. See how much more he stands out and he's more defined? So I'm going to do that to my other dancing person over here. And then I'm going to go over my cat because my cat kind of lost his definition when I put the markers, when I colored him with markers. There we go. And that stands out a little bit. You just have to do a little background over here. And I think we're just about done. So this is the inside of my happy house, and this is the outside. So it's already a lot of fun. And now I'm going to take it to the next part. I'm just going to push all those over. I'm going to glue my happy house onto a background paper, and I chose to do it on blue. So I'm going to take my glue stick. And I'm just going to pop my house on there. Now, I'm rubbing it down to make sure the glue is staying. But before you do that, make sure that that paint is completely dry. Otherwise, you'll just smear it all over. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So fun. And now we just I need to add like a few of the last um, details. So since I did uh, a daytime, I can even make this into a nighttime, and maybe I'll make this into a nighttime to show you. So I did some clouds and some birds and the sun, but maybe for this one I'll do a nighttime. And I'm just going to go back to my scraps, and I'm just going to... The larger chunks, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to take... There's two right here, and at the same time I'm going to make some clouds. I'm just going to cut some bumpy cloud lines. You can draw it first if you want. So clouds are always interesting shapes. So you don't have to worry if they don't look perfect. Because I don't know what a perfect cloud would look like. And I'm actually going to, on the clouds, I'm going to draw it in a cloud with my black. Because I like the way it looks. It makes it pop out even more. I'm going to do that on both my clouds. 
And I think I'm going to do one more cloud. Maybe two. I like to do things in even number, in odd numbers. I think it just makes um, your composition of your artwork look a little bit more interesting than everything being symmetrical and even. So, even though this made two clouds, I might only use one of them. Or I'll cut another one, we'll see. So I have this guy glued down. And I'm just gonna arrange my clouds, figure out where I want them. Maybe I want one like coming out from behind the house if I can. And a couple up there. Yeah, I think I'm only going to just pop in three clouds for now. You can do more clouds. You won't have to do clouds. You could do whatever you want. So here, I popped in those clouds, and if it's going to be nighttime, I definitely need a moon. So I'm going to go to one of my scraps, and I'm just going to do that crescent moon shape, which is that curved line, and then another curved line in there, like that. And I think I'm going to color my crescent moon yellow to make it stand out a little bit from the clouds. And I am going to outline it with my black marker. And I just like to work sometimes on a piece of scrap cardboard or paper just to keep my table from getting too, too messy. I think I'm going to put a face in my moon. So there I have my moon and my clouds. And you can certainly add as much as you want. You could add some birds. I think maybe I could add some stars, but instead of cutting them out, maybe I'll just draw them on the background. You could still draw on the background. Think about if you lived in a happy house or a happy apartment, what kind of things would be happening in the sky? Maybe there would be happy aliens and happy spaceships, right? And here is my finished happy house. I hope you enjoyed making our happy houses today and I will see you real soon. Bye bye.